What is good you guys, welcome back to The Hero Porn, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how the newest star signing of the Miami Heat, Kyle Lowry, can help the Heat in the future and now because he has just signed officially as of yesterday. And we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be talking about Bam winning the gold medal. We're gonna be talking about Omer Yard 7 signing a new contract and some more stuff, some more news going on with the Heat. So make sure you guys uh, stay tuned till the end, watch till the end, enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. We have just hit 1,200. Let's go for 1,300 now. Also follow my Twitter if you guys have Twitter because I do talk about the heat almost every day on Twitter. I'll give my thoughts on whatever's going on. So if you have Twitter, do not miss out. Let's get right into it though. Um, what we're gonna be talking about first, like I said, Kyle Lowry, you know, it's official. Kyle Lowry has signed, Markeith Morris has signed, uh, Duncan is re-signed back. Dwayne Dedman is re-signed back. Year seven. The two people who have not um, come back to sign contracts are Victor Oladipo has not been announced by the Heat. PJ Tucker has not been announced by the Heat. And Jimmy's extension has not been announced by the Heat. These three things. Um, but everyone else, including Gabe Vincent and Max Drews, have been announced by the Miami Heat. So Kyle Lowry is a Miami Heat player officially. You know, the trade was Goran Dragic and Preston Zachua. Um, no, there was no second round pick involved. There was a rumor of a second round pick, but it's, it was not, you know, involved. So Goran and Precious, a uh, straight swap for Kyle Lowry, and he will be making a three year, $85 million deal. Uh, so less than 90, which is what we thought it would be. We thought it would be 90, but it is slightly less than that three years, 85 million. The implications about this is that with Kyle Lowry on the books and with us just signing Omer at seven back to a new deal. We are very, very close to the tax, which means we only have, in my mind, room to sign one more player um, to a mid-level exception minimum deal. Now, who that player is, we don't know. We'll get to that later in the video, though. Let's talk about Kyle Lowry first. I just wanted to talk about how it's been official. But Kyle Lowry, I think, is going to come in and help a lot, help, help our team a lot, man. I think I've seen a lot of people saying he's old, he's this, he's that. Listen, you know, Kyle Lowry, I think this was a perfect trade to make. Obviously, you know, people could say, why didn't we get him for free? We should have signed him outright. But you guys have to understand, staying above the cap means that we still had these cap space to re-sign Duncan Robinson. If we tried to re if we tried to sign Kyle Lowry outright without giving up pieces, we could still sign him, but we wouldn't have place to re-sign Duncan. So what Pat Riley did and Andy Ellisberg did was they went over the cap to trade away Precious and Goron so that even after acquiring Kyle Lowry, you still have the money to re-sign Duncan. Um, and we still had money to get PJ Tucker on a deal. So I think that, you know, Kyle Lowry, you know, people can say whatever you want about him, but you can't take away that he's a champion and he's an amazing player. And I, I made three, a list of three things of how I think he'll help the Heat. The number one thing, that I think will be amazing, like really, really crucial for us is his shot making ability, shooting ability, and his ability to score in the clutch. Now it's no secret that the Miami Heat lost to the Milwaukee Bucks, got swept because of their offensive struggles. I know our defense at times was, you know, lackluster. We were getting them a lot of open threes, but against the Bucks, you kind of have to pick your poison. It's either letting Giannis go off or letting the shooters shoot. And we chose the side of trying to, you know, send two or three people at Giannis and daring the shooters to make shots, which they did at, at times. You know, Bryn Forbes and uh, Bobby Portis and them, they, they really made shots at times. But I think our offense was the main reason we lost that series. We couldn't really get anything going. And you saw they took out Jimmy from the series and it, they took out Jimmy and they basically took our, our, our entire offense with him because he basically, you know, throughout the season had been carrying us offensively. There were so many stretches in the, in the regular season where if Jimmy had gone to the bench, we were panicking. We didn't really have an answer because we had just lost our guy. And, you know, Jimmy means so much to this offense. And now having another guy like Kyle to come in and support him is really, really big for us because not only can he control the tempo of the game, but he can also make a lot of shots. And he is a lot, he's a better shooter than Jimmy for sure. He's a better shot maker. Obviously, you know, finishing at the rim and uh, drawing fouls. And yeah, although Kyle is good at drawing fouls, I would give the edge to that for Jimmy. But as far as, you know, shooting the ball, Kyle Lowry is, you know, one of the best shooters at his position. So I think that Kyle Lowry will come in and, you know, he can, he can be a guy who really helps the half court offense, not only with this 
ability to control the game but also with his ability to make shots like if you're if the shot clock is running down you need some guy to create his own shot and you're at the three-point line the ball can be in Kyle Lowry's hands and you're feeling good about it because he's done that time and time again um, especially in the clutch you saw him make a lot of clutch shots uh, against us you know he hit that big half court buzzer beater I think it was in 2016 and then last year he was hitting some huge shots against the Celtics in the playoffs so I think that he will come in and be one of the go-to guys on this team who can not only uh, control the game, but also score the ball at will. He can draw fouls. He'll be a very good addition to this team as far as helping our half-court offense out because we really, really struggled with that when Jimmy was either taken out of the game uh, physically and, you know, um, technically because the Bucks actually took him out of the game by sending multiple defenders at him and not letting him score the ball and without him it was tough for us so adding another guy in kyle really helps us out helps us out a lot so i think kyle larry will come in and make our half court offense a lot better with the shot making ability scoring ability um being clutch you know he's going to be one of the uh guys that we go to down the stretch him and jimmy will probably take turns you know doing what they do down the stretch i think kyle will be an amazing fit on this team because of that uh, number two is because of his playmaking ability. You know, I said number one because of his shooting, scoring, clutch making, uh, clutch shot making ability. But number two is his playmaking ability and his ability to control the tempo, read the game. He's one of the best floor generals. You know, a lot of people look at assists and say, wow, he's not top. He's not top 10 in assists, but you can't look at assists and, uh, you know, judge if a guy is a floor general or not. You got you just have to watch games. And if you've watched the Raptors, you know that Kyle Lowry is a floor general. He's a guy that's one of the best you know, floor generals at his position. And think about this. I don't want to compare these two players, but it's very similar to how Chris Paul went to the Suns and elevated that team. And I'm not saying that was all on Chris Paul because I don't think it was. I think that Suns team was on the way to becoming something special. They had just went eight and in the bubble. I, I'm a firm believer they would have made the playoffs that year if DeAndre Ayton didn't get suspended for 25 games. So they, they were already on the way, but Chris Paul really, you know, picked them up. You know, and he put them to that next level. And Kyle Lowry, you know, has the potential to do the same thing. I'm not saying he's a better player than Chris Paul, but he can have the similar impact on this team. And this team is a better fit for Kyle Lowry because it already has a veteran in Jimmy who's already been doing the same since he's got here. So I think Kyle Lowry with his playmaking ability, he's going to be a great with Bam. I think Bam and Kyle are going to have a great relationship. Um, as far as like on the court and stuff and hopefully off the court they you know they get along well and stuff too but i think that kyle is going to get so many easy looks for bam because bam is going to you know feast with layups dunks he even said if you guys have not watched kyle lowry's interview please go watch it i'm pretty sure it's on tobin's youtube channel you guys probably know who that is he's a heat reporter he posts a lot of interviews and stuff but um kyle lowry i think he's going to get a lot of easy shots for bam and this is no disrespect to k none but the, the 1920 points that Bam was putting up with K Nun as his point guard, Kyle Lowry is a much better playmaker than K Nun. So I think that he will come in and get Bam so much more easier shots. He, he, there's not just one guy that can get Bam the ball because Jimmy was really our only playmaking source to get Bam the ball. And now we have Kyle as well. And the biggest thing that Kyle said in his press conference that I loved or interview, whatever, whatever it was, was he was trying to get Bam more confident to shoot the 15 footer and then maybe the three that is that was music to my ears man that was like i was so happy when he said that because that's what we've been trying to get bam to do and i'm not sure if it's a system thing i'm not sure if suppose not letting him shoot or i'm not sure if he just don't doesn't want to shoot but there's gonna have to be a time where he starts you know starts launching them and hopefully you know pat did say that they're gonna try to evaluate how they use bam this season hopefully he shoots more because i think that he has a nice 15 footer we saw it he, he, he hit it a couple times against uh, france in the final the gold medal game um i think that bam bam will benefit the most you know a lot of people talk about jimmy and kyle's relationship and they do have one obviously jimmy made kyle his uh, daughter's godfather or whatever but bam is on the court itself he's gonna have you know he's gonna get a, the biggest boost from kyle lowry being on the team in my opinion and we'll see what happens but i think that his playmaking ability is going to be huge uh, not only for Bam too, though, for Duncan running off of screens and uh, people like that, PJ Tucker sitting in the corner. I think that his his playmaking ability, you know, he can also be a guy that we take turns if Jimmy's out of the game, we can insert Kyle in and then stagger them in this that way. And then I have them both playing closing minutes too. 
it can work, man. I think it really, really can work. And I'm super excited to see what's going to happen. You know, this is the first time we've really had three all-star caliber players on one team since the big three. And probably since, you know, technically since the big three, but since the, the bubble where Goran was our leading scorer and he was essentially the third all-star, we haven't really had that. And now we do. You know, Kyle, Jimmy, Bam, these, these guys are all-star all NBA level talent and I'm so excited to see how they help the Heat. The last thing that I uh, that I did not mention was Kyle Lowry's defensive ability. He is one of the best defenders at his position. I know he's a little bit undersized but he just makes up for it for his heart with his heart, effort, will, everything man. I think he's one of the best at drawing charges. He's up there. I'm pretty sure there was a statistic that he was leading the league in charges drawn over the past five years. Um, he puts his body on the line. He's a very smart high IQ defender. Like all those like little gritty things you see guys like Drew Holiday doing, even Jimmy to a certain extent, Kyle will do the same thing. Uh, he's a very competitive guy. He just wants to win. Um, I think his the defense will fit right in. And I'm not, I don't think defense is the biggest issue because I think the Heat in general are a very good defensive team. But this is the first time we've really had like a great defensive guard since D Wade retired um, starting and probably Jay Rich as well. Like since Josh Richardson got traded, we didn't really have, you know, a defensive guard and after d wade retired after j j rich left guard defense was one of our biggest problems because none of our guards could defend and now we have one of the best guard defenders in the game coming into the team and not, not only is he going to help with the defense he's going to help with communication leadership all that good stuff man i think kyle larry's going to come to this team and he's going to be a guy that we you know he's going to be a staple on the defensive end a lot of people are going to follow him he can you can hide Duncan on defense because you have a lot of good defenders around him. This team is going to be filled with dogs, toughness, grittiness. Even Markeith Moore said it in his interview. He said, you know, um, we have a lot of people that are going to be biting, not barking. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm super excited. You know, this this team is going to be very, it's going to fit. It's going to fit really, really well on paper. Like on paper, it looks really good, but I still think it's going to fit on the court because of the mold of the guys we got in. Like, Kyle Lowry's a dog. PJ Tucker's a dog. Markeith Morris is a dog. Dwayne Dedman, we re-signed, he's a dog. So I, I, I love this team. I absolutely love the construction of this team. Um, now, coming to who, coming to these spots left on the roster now, with the addition of Omer Yurt 7, shout out to Omer Yurt 7 for getting the standard contract. I, I knew it was coming. Like, I, I knew it was coming because, you know, the, you're not going to promote a guy this much and not know that he's going to come back. Like, it's not going to happen. So I knew he was going to re-sign back. I just didn't know if it was going to be a two-way or a standard deal, but it ended up being a standard deal. So shout out to Omer Yurt 7. He really, really grinded for that and he deserves it. Um, I was, you know, I was just, uh, debating with some, some people on Twitter. I was like, you know, people were talking about how UD shouldn't come back or whatever. I didn't really see a big deal about it. You know, it's the 15th spot on the roster. You know, we've had a great free agency. I don't know why this is being the debate topic of the day of whether UD should come back or not. I don't think it's a it's that big of a deal whether he comes back or not. Like, if he comes back, he comes back. If he doesn't, cool. I just don't think that Omer Yurt 7 is gonna get used in games, which is why I was like, I would rather have UD on the roster than have a guy coming in from Summer League who I don't think will be used at all. So at least you have UD's leadership while the poor guy who's coming in from the Summer League roster, whether it be Marcus Garrett or someone like that, he's just sitting on the bench. So I just don't think Spo is gonna use them because you know, look at the track record. The Heat love to ease their guys into the rotation. Like, this is an example I was talking about. Like, KZ, we drafted KZ in 2019. And when is the last time he's consistently been a part of the rotation? And this is not, you know, including the parts where we had COVID protocols and injuries, so he had to because we didn't have enough players. I'm just talking about regularly. When has he been a part of the rotation? I, I cannot recall. You know, maybe here and there some games, but I, I just don't know. I, I have no memory of KZ actually being part of the rotation. He was drafted two years ago now, and we traded away three first second round picks to trade up for him because he was a very touted. You know, he was one of the um, best players at, at Stanford in, in his conference. He was I'm telling you guys right now, KZ was a guy that a lot of teams wanted. Man. He was projected to go first round. I don't know why he slipped to second, but he was projected to go first round. And the fact that we got him in the second round, we traded away three first, uh, second round picks for him. I keep saying first round, second round picks for him. And he still hasn't really, you know, played. So if he is not getting in the rotation, 
I don't know how we can expect guys like Omer Yurt 7 or Marcus Garrett. Maybe Omer Yurt 7 because he has G League experience, but certainly not any other guy that is coming out of college fresh. We're not going to throw them into a game. So I would, I know, I will see what happens to the last spot, whether it's UD or whether it's someone else. You know, I would like to get a guy in from free agency on a minimum deal. But if it's UD, like, I don't really, you know, I just don't think we have enough off the bench. That's my only concern, you know, with Victor Oladipo being out till uh, at least uh, March, not at least March, at most March, at least December, he's going to come back somewhere between December and March. We'll see what happens. But with him being out, the bench is looking kind of dry. We have Tyler, we have um, Dwayne Dedman, we have Markeith Morris or PJ Tucker, whichever one comes off the bench. And apart from that, it's really Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, KZ, and Omer Yurt 7, the, the young guys. So I, I don't know how we're going to capitalize, how we're going to pick up, you know, uh, this the slack when the starting lineup is out because we don't really have the punch off the bench that can really, really help us. Like Tyler, I think can be a great score off the bench. Like I would actually bet on Tyler winning six man of the year because I think that he will be probably one of the only sources of offense off the bench. And then you have a spot up shooter in Markeith Morris. You have a big man who's going to roll in Dwayne Dedman. But apart from that, you know, Max Struess is a shooter, but he's not a scorer. Gabe Vincent is a defensive guard. You know, he's, he's shown flashes of shooting the ball well, but still inconsistent on offense. So I still think we lack something on offense off the bench that we could get out in, in, in uh, free agency. But we'll see who the Heat try to pick up. I'm, I'm, I've seen that a lot of offers have gone in for players, but they're still mulling and waiting to see who they're going to sign with. Um, but yeah, that's what I have to say about the uh, Yurt 7 deal. Shout out to Omer Yurt 7, man. He's been grinding. Uh, he's been working, man. And I think he's going to be, you know, he's going to be in due time the guy who can play next to Bam for the future. And I think that will be, I'll be super excited when that day com finally comes. Um, it's probably not going to come for a couple years, but when it comes, I'll be super happy. And then lastly, shout out to Bam Adebayo for winning the Olympics, the, the gold medal in the Olympics. Shout out to Bam, man. You know, I, Bam is uh gone through a rough year as, as far as you know ending the year with a bad postseason run but he really really picked it up in the play in, in the olympics you know obviously he wasn't scoring or anything like that but his defense i thought was amazing i thought his playmaking was amazing he made some big big time boards rebounds um he even expanded his game a little bit i saw him take some threes in the exhibition game and um even at the olympic level he was shooting that 15 footer in the in the final in the in the in the gold medal game and i was really happy to see that hopefully he shoots it more you know when he comes back we'll, we'll we'll get him into proper shape and he will be ready to go we'll be ready to go i'm super happy for bam and you know he's gonna bring it back to miami i'm, I'm super super happy but yeah that's pr pretty much all i have to say man I, i've talked about a lot and um you know i'm, I'm just, just so excited for the season man i'm really really am you know, this Eastern Conference is going to be a it's going to be a dogfight because there's so many teams that are improving. You know, you can the, the eight teams that I named in the last video, I think will make the playoffs. But even after those eight teams, because the teams I named were the Nets, the Bucks, us, the Sixers, the Hawks, the Bulls, the Pacers, the Knicks, the, you know, um, the Celtics, the Raptors, the Wizards, like there's so many teams. They're absolutely like there's so many teams in the East that could cause, you know, havoc. And I think that this is going to be one of the most exciting years of NBA basketball because of the amount of talent that's spread out in the Eastern Conference. You know, the Western Conference, I, I don't know about the West. I haven't been paying much attention to, you know, the teams at the West, but the East, I just know the East is going to be a dogfight. So we'll see what happens, man. Thank you guys for tuning in, listening. I'll see y'all later as always. Make sure y'all drop a like, subscribe, comment down below. Hit up the Twitter. Peace.